largest city in the United States, I found this just amazing, it's the largest city in the United States until Philadelphia population grew beyond 40,000. That's amazing. That an Indian village in St. Louis was larger than the largest in the United States. So, um, 120 mounds were built over time there. So, um, oh, there's a good example of he's holding a symbolic kind of <coughs> javelin thing in his hand. St. Louis was known as Mound City. 600 years ago, there were 100 mounds on the Missouri side of the river. Uh, we really don't know what happened to these people. Uh, global warming came about. That there was a 2,000-year dry spell. These people are talking about now. You know, there was 2,000 years of drought uh, that happened. So, uh, probably affected the crops. Um, war disease. This is a big pipe that they had. Uh, the, um, the dark side, they did do human sacrifices. Uh, they recovered more than 250 skeletons from Mound 72. Scholars believe at least almost 72% of these were sacrificed victims. Some of them weren't dead when they buried them because they could see where they tried to claw themselves out of the ground. Women, men, and women. Uh, a lot of this, though, was if they raided another village and captured it, then the punishment was. Uh, there, there was also a game that they played that the losing team got sacrificed. So that's a serious football game. <laughs> but that's the dark side of uh, the Cohokio people. Uh, here, this tells about digging out of the sand so forth, pull themselves out of mass bodies. Um, they don't think they were all buried at the same time. So, um, A lot like the, down in Mexico, you know, the Mayans were similar, similar look kind of. Uh, they did have architects and city planners because the cities were laid out very uh, geometric. some of the artifacts that they had. Uh, I have very few artifacts in my collection that are from this area. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful artwork though. Uh, big trading, they did a lot of trading. Uh, the Hopewell people were traders too. Um, there was a lot of trading done by the Merrimack people, Indians. Uh, all of these different areas in here did some trading up and down. They'd run over somebody else. A lot of uh, flint was brought in uh, from different places. A lot of this was covered with copper, embossed copper. I have is more uh, up through the woodland period, and then I, I don't spend a lot of time in this area, but I'm showing you this because it was so beautifully done, a lot of their artwork was done. The Crow history period, 400, 200 years ago, Kickapoo were here, this is all this, is all this part of the country, uh, Delaware, Shawnee, Miami, uh, and so forth. Europeans were starting to come over here, African slaves. Um, uh, the Soto arrives. So we start hearing the villages, the Missouri Indian villages were relatively large, 150 to 300 acres. Uh, when the French first encountered the Missouri Indians, uh, now known as Van Beach State Park, that's where they live. Uh, St. Louis gets its start established in uh, 1764 by uh, French and then uh, going down, S Spain was there. Um, you know, I just forgot that we had all this influence. Gascony River is a French name and, and a lot of French, St. Louis uh, uh, was a lot of French names in St. Louis. Uh, 
treaty signed. Uh, Osage, all of these tribes were kicked around. Uh, Osage probably more than a lot of them. Uh, they moved all over the place. They finally relocated down in Oklahoma. Lewis and Clark, this is an, uh, a replica of Lewis and Clark took boxes of these peace pipe tommyhawks pipes along with them and they traded them as they made their journey. Um, does anybody know the unusual rifle that Lewis and Clark had with them on the expedition? What kind of rifle it was? Air rifle. Air rifle. An air rifle. Wow. I, when I first read that, I thought, man, that's really cool. An air rifle. Wasn't a BB gun. No. Wasn't a BB gun. No, it was an air rifle. I didn't really, you know, it didn't make any noise when it fired and the Indians were just flabbergasted. Because they had, they only had like two of them, I think. And, but the Indians didn't know how many they had, so they were really aware, weary of this. Delaware, um, Shawnee moved to Missouri, and then uh, the Osage were really big people. They were like over six feet tall, uh, had a mohawk or a, a, a roach, and uh, very, very warm. <coughs> so the Delaware were, were kind of the, the go between. Uh, this is a, a, a pipe with the Four Seasons, um, this is a replica too. You'll see in movies where they're smoking the pipe and they're waving the smoke up to the gods. into the 14th century. Uh, Oni Nito, I'm not sure I pronounced these right. Uh, Washashai people is the, is the, uh, uh, the Osage. Uh, we have a park in Oklahoma called the Washashi Park. Uh, four states, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. Uh, big canoe people is what the name Missouri means. Uh, Missouri is the name that we gave it. But, uh, the word S-I-O-U-A-N, however that's pronounced, is, means big canoe people. I was in my office when I was working for Phillips and this Indian comes in with these Peace metals made out of solid silver, and they're about the size of a grapefruit. And he wanted to sell them, and he had like five or six. And uh, I couldn't afford what he wanted for them, but I asked him if I could borrow one. And I made a mold of it, and I cast. And on one side it says this. On the other side it was George. Some rumor that these were bad luck for the people that owned them because the Americans treated the Indians so poorly that the peace medal didn't mean anything. Uh, Marquette, Joliet again, first white people to visit Missouri. You probably, all this stuff you know. There's the Gascony, probably not what it looks like today. Um, Merrimack people uh, and the Mississippi people. After them, the record is lost. We don't know who lived here. Uh, there wasn't any permanent homeland. There was different groups that came through here. The uh, Mississippian people did come through here. And there, there's only one site in, in Gascony County where there's a cave that had some Mississippian people was buried in there that the archaeological people excavated. But that's the only one in Gascony County that, that we know of. A lot of 
politics going on this time, of year, this period of time. Um, this is what I was telling you about earlier about the roach, uh, the way they dressed. Uh, Sage. This is where this is a tree over in Pahusco, Oklahoma, where. I actually know this painter that did this. He is an Osage, and uh, this is a trading tree where they would meet and trade, uh, negotiate terms for different things. 1808, they gave up all their rights to Missouri east of the line, and uh, Washashi moved to, first they moved to Kansas, then down to Oklahoma. So less than 200 years ago, the hills around Merrimack Springs, this area of the country was rich, it was the homeland of the Shawnee, the last Indians to live in this area were the Shawnee. So if you're ever on a quiz show, what were the last Indians to live in? Decimated County area, Shawnee. So. We're located in the middle of a great network of rivers, make it easy for these people to travel up and down. Food shelter, we got Osage, Gascony, Arkansas, Mississippi, and so on and so forth. Uh, they're the highways. There they are. To give you an idea, there's a lot of rivers. And you have to stop and think why we're finding so much Indian artifacts is because they were here for thousands and thousands of years. The Arcade people were here the longest, and then as they progressed, they kept getting shorter and shorter. Excuse me. Boiling Springs still produces 42 million gal gallons per day. Uh, so Gascony River is not quite 300 miles long. I've canoed all of it at one time or another with the help of my cousin over there. They picked me up one day. Uh, I did part of it. Beautiful river. Provides lots of fresh food, mussels. Uh, half our States bear Indian names as well as our rivers, cities, hammocks, so forth, market canoes. Uh, we owe a lot to them. Uh, and that's it.